Okay guys, so today we are going to build a freelance marketplace like Upwork or Fiverr. And if you follow all the steps in this tutorial, you'll end up with a beautiful website like this one with a beautiful hero section. And right here, you have a search box, a menu section with two call to actions, one to list the service and one to post a request. And if we scroll down, we have our main categories followed by our featured services. And as you can see, it looks very professional, doesn't it? Then we have our customer reviews or testimonials. We can also display our top freelancers. And finally, our main call to action section where your visitors can register on your website, either as a freelancer or a customer. Now let's have a look at our services page. Here, your visitors can find exactly what they want thanks to our filter section here on the left hand side and everything literally everything in the filter section is customizable based on your business model and finally we have the freelancer page where you can see all the gigs and services that freelancer has to offer now you can test all of these features immediately by clicking on the very first link in the description below to launch our one click demo and this way, you'll be able to follow along as I show you how this works. All right, so let's get started. Okay, guys, and for this project, we're going to start with a fresh WordPress installation. And that means we don't have any theme installed apart from the ones that come with WordPress. And also we have no plugins installed at all. So completely fresh installation. And for this, we're going to use a theme from HivePress.io. So as always, I'll leave a link in the description below. So as you can see with HivePress.io, you can build marketplaces, directories, and classifies with WordPress. So let's have a look at the different themes. So as you can see, we have Expert Hive, Task Hive, Rental Hive, we have Job Hive and Listing Hive. So I've covered all of these already in the past. So this one is to create a directory. This is to create a job board. This one is for rental marketplace. And this one is to create something similar to TaskRabbit. And this one is the one we're going to focus on today, which is TaskHive. So basically with this one, you can create a website similar to Fiverr and Upwork. And this is a very clean layout, as you can see, very professional looking. And the beauty of this, it is easy to customize, as you will see, and it is truly multi-purpose. So this one comes with multiple extensions, premium extensions and free ones as well. So with this theme, you get marketplace, requests, tags, favorites, messages and reviews. So let's have a look at all the different extensions. Now on this page here, you have access to 15 plus extensions that you can install to extend the functionalities of your website. So basically when you purchase this theme, you also get marketplace, normally 39 US dollars, request, normally 39 US dollars, and tags, normally 29 US dollars. All of these are included in the theme. So basically you're getting for $107 worth of extensions with that theme as well. And then you can add as many as you want. As you can see, all the free ones are also available to you. Uh, you can install them on your website as well. Now let's go back to our theme. And as you can see, the cost is $79 only. And bear in mind, this is a lifetime single site license, unlimited automatic update. So it's not renewable every year. It is a one-off payment and that's it. You pay $79 US and it's yours forever. Okay, so all you have to do basically is to click buy now and I'll meet you guys back in the WordPress dashboard. Okay, very good. And from here, we're gonna go into appearance add new and now we're going to upload our theme so let's click on this choose file and now select the file that you just downloaded from the hivepress.io website click open and then install so now we need to activate it and as you can see our new theme is activated so just on top here we get this message that says that this theme recommends the following plugin so we have to install a few plugins so this is our next step so click on begin installing plugins and now you're going to bulk select them all just like this and then select install and apply. Very good. And now all our plugins are installed. So now we can return to required plugin installer. And now we're going to bulk select them all once more. But this time we're going to select activate and click apply. Very good. 
So now all our plugins are installed and activated. And just to be on the safe side, click on plugins. And as you can see, they're all listed here and activated. So that's all perfect. Now let's have a quick look at our website. So let's open this in a new tab. Very good. So as you can see, our theme is installed. We have all the main layout and everything is there, but there is no content yet. So what we need to do now is to import the demo content. So for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard and we need to install an additional plugin. So we click on plugins here, add new. And in the search box, type in one click demo. And this is the very first one here. So we need to install this one and then activate it. There you go. And now we can import our demo content. So this time, if we go into appearance, and as you can see, we have an additional tab now that says import demo data. So let's click on this. And this is the content of Task Hive. So all we have to do to import the demo content is to click on this button here. So you have the option to add a few more plugins. It's really up to you. You can add them if you want to. So this one is for SEO. This one is Monster Inside. This will add a contact form, but you don't really have to. It's up to you. It's optional here. So let's continue without them for now. And as you can see, it is importing our content. So this is going to take a few moments, maybe one minute or so. So what I'm going to do now is to pause the video at this stage and I'll meet you guys when it's fully imported. So there you go, guys. As you can see, the import is now complete. That took about 60 seconds, maybe all together. So it was quite fast. So let's go back to our website and let's refresh. And just like that, in just one click, we have the full demo imported on our website. So as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful layout. Absolutely fantastic. So as you can see, this is going to save us a lot of time. Now we can just tweak things around a little bit to make it our own. And we can do that together now. OK, so for this, let's go back to our WordPress dashboard and let's have a look at our different sections here. As you can see by the side, we have a menu section and all of these are part of the same plugin, part of the same theme. So we have Hivepress, listings, vendors, payout and request. So these are the main features, the main tools we're going to use to customize our website. OK, so first, let's take care of a few minor details. So for this, we're going to go into settings and in general. And as you can see, we have a site title and the tagline. So here, don't forget to put your site title. So most likely your business name or something like this. And then the tagline underneath. So I'm just going to put here Mr. Web Review for now. OK. And just make sure that the admin email address is correctly entered here because this is where you will receive all your emails and then click save changes. Very good. And now we're going to go into permalinks and we're going to make sure that we select post name here in the common settings. So basically this is to help your website with ranking with SEO and to be found online and it's easier on the eye as well for your visitors. So basically here, if you have a page that's called about us, it will display your domain name.com forward slash about hyphen us, which is much easier to read than uh, those sort of gibberish and numbers and all that. OK, so then scroll down the page and click save changes. So that's just done for the basic settings here in WordPress. Now, let's take care of customizing our website. So the first step is to take care of our listings. So basically on this page, this is where you'll find all the different services that are being offered on your website. So as you can see, you have the title, we have the vendor's name and the categories and when it was published. So if you go to our website here under the page services, this is where they are all located. So let's have a look at this one here. For instance, this one is from Thomas Hinton, engaging and share worthy Facebook posts and articles. So if you go back here, as you can see, that's our very first one here from Thomas Hinton. So this is basically how this works. So by the side, as you can see, we have all the different categories. So basically your visitors can narrow down their searches based on categories, tags, price, and also a few different options here, which are called attributes. So let me show you now how to configure your website step by step. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard and let's start with the categories. So these steps are very important. So you have to make sure that you take care of these steps before uh, starting anything else on your website. So what we need to set up is the categories, the tags and the attributes. So these are basically the bare bones structure of your website, the main structure on which you're going to build everything else. So these are very important. So you have to think about it 
thoroughly and make sure that you have the right elements for success. So like I just mentioned, the first step is to take care of our categories. So what are categories? Well, very simply, as you can see here, we have designs and graphics, uh, digital marketing, mobile apps, and so on and so on. So depending on the type of website that you're planning to build, the categories are basically all the different fields of expertise, uh, type of industries maybe, or generally speaking, the different types of works that can be provided on your website. So if you wanted to create a new one, so let's add maybe web design, okay, just like this. And then let's add a description, maybe something like that. And then all we have to do is to click add category. As you can see, the item was added and it is in fact here on top. So we have web design now, how the description and the slug was created automatically. Now, as you can see here, it says parent category. So what does that mean? You can also create categories and then subcategories. So in our instance here, we could have web design and then as a subcategory, we could have WordPress, maybe HTML and e-commerce. Okay, so let's create three different items now. So let's create one here that's called WordPress websites. Okay, and now we can select web design as our parent category and let's click add category. Okay. As you can see now, our main category is called web design and our subcategory is WordPress websites. So let's do the same for e-commerce maybe. And let's select web design as a subcategory, add, and there you go. As you can see, main category, web design, subcategories, we have e-commerce and WordPress websites. And feel free to do this with as many categories as you need. Now, when creating a new category, you may have noticed this one here that says image. So we have a button here to select an image. So I skipped that on purpose just to show you how this works. So if we go back to our homepage here and refresh very quickly, I scrolled on the page. You can see we have our different categories here showing up on our homepage. So all of them have an icon or an image, but this one doesn't because this is the one we just created. So I skipped that on purpose just to show you how it works. Now, let's go back to our WordPress dashboard here and let's edit our web design section. So now we're going to upload an image. Okay, so we're going to select this. You can go into your media library, select one of them, or you can upload your own file. That's really up to you. So just for our example here, I'm just going to select this one and let's click update. Now if we go back to our homepage and refresh, as you can see, this one now has an icon or an image. So let's go back here. Let's go back to our categories. And then we have one more option here that says display subcategories instead of listing. So what is this one about? So let me show you. So if you go back here, we have design and graphics. You can see there's three ads under this uh, section. So let's click on this. And when you click on that, when it goes to that page, it's showing you all the different ads immediately. Now, if you had subcategories underneath this section, design and graphics, you could tick this box and then it will show the categories instead of the content of those categories. Okay, so let me show you very quickly how this works. So I'm going to create three subcategories underneath this one and add an image as well. All right, so just like that, as you can see now, I've design and graphics and underneath I created subcategory one, two and three and I assigned a picture to all of them. Okay, now let me edit this one very quickly and we're going to enable the display categories instead of listings. So let's click update and now let's go back to our homepage here. So we're going to homepage. I'm going to scroll down and now we're going to select this one. So now normally, as you can see, instead of showing the content and the listings, it's showing the subcategories. So there you go, guys. That's another option uh, depending on how you want to use your website and make it available to your visitors. OK, so this is an option I wanted to show you. So we're just going to keep it the way it was and let's click update for now. And let's go back to our categories and that's basically it for the category so we've covered everything related to this subject now let's move on to the next one which is the tags okay so what are tags exactly tags are like keywords that your visitors can use to narrow down their searches but instead of looking by categories they can look by specific keywords so as you remembered we created our category here called web design so we have web design so maybe in the tags section, you can break this down by different keywords. Maybe you would have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 
or maybe you provide services in the printing industry. So it could be flyers, uh, business cards, maybe brochure, letterheads, and so on and so on. So these are basically keywords that people would be looking for in order to find the exact services and uh, the, the right uh, vendor, obviously, you know. And to create a new tag is very simple. All you have to do is to enter the name here. So let's say, for instance, business cards, and then click add tag. And that's basically it. And you can create as many as you want. All you have to do basically is to focus on what you think your visitors will be looking for. So as you can see here with coding, maybe creative, maybe editing. These are the main keywords that your visitors would be looking for. And then next, we have the most impressive part of this website, which is the attributes. So this, again, is absolutely amazing, as you will see just in a few seconds, because these attributes will help you to create a website that's fully customizable and based on your own personal requirements. So let me show you how this works. Now, as you can see, we have max revisions, service includes, delivery time, license type. So if you go back to our service page here, they're basically here, as you can see, of delivery time, service includes, etc., etc. Okay, so this is going to help your visitors to filter down the types of service they're looking for. So let's say if you are in a hurry, you cannot afford to wait seven days or even three. You need it within 24 hours. So you can search for vendors that are actually available to do the work within 24 hours. And then if you click filter, it will only show the vendors that selected that option in their services. Okay. And this is the beauty of this system, you know, that you can create as many attributes as you want to work around your business model. So let's say if you're providing uh, services in the printing industry, maybe you want to add an attribute here in relation to designing the artwork. Maybe the artwork is provided or maybe it is not provided uh, in, uh, within the price. OK, so let's create that attribute together, for instance. So if you go back here, we can create a new attribute. So let's go ahead with this. So we're going to add a new one. So let's call this one, for instance, artwork design. OK, and as you can see underneath, we have three different sections with editing, search and display. So editing is basically how you're going to configure and define what this artwork design attribute is. The search one is related to the front end here, how you will display this in the front end. And here is just the formatting of the layout of the search terms itself so let's start with our first section here editing so this one is editable so we have to tick this and then we have to select the type of field so artwork design we said is going to be either provided or not provided so two different options so if we click on our drop down menu here we can select among a few different options as you can see you have attachment check boxes date email embed number radio button select text text area time and url so it's a very comprehensive selection and you can select any of those uh, to fulfill your personal requirements you know but let's select here for our, our case here we said uh, either two different options so maybe we're going to select radio buttons so check boxes you can offer different options but you can select multiple options radio buttons you're going to provide different options but you can only select one, which is what we want here. OK, so let's click on this. Now, once you've done this, the editing, you're going to click publish. There you go. And as you can see, now that we've published this section, we have an additional options here, which is edit option. And this is where we're going to enter our different options. OK, so let's go ahead with this. So let's click on edit options. And right here, this is where we can add our different options. So let's create our first one. So this one will be provided and then you can define the order. So maybe you want this to show first and then non provided will be second. OK, so let's add the option. So now we have provided and then we have not provided and then we're going to put second for the order. There you go. Just like that. So now we have our two items here. We have provided and not provided. So let's go back to our attributes. We're going to edit artwork design again. And this time we're going to fill the other options here. So, and again, this is related to what we have in the front end. So this section here, okay? So we want this to be filterable. Yes, we want it to be sortable. So number one, first, number two, second. And then what type of field is this? So normally the field here should be the exact same than the one you selected here. So it should also be radio button. Okay, just like this. Now let's scroll down. Now we have the display option. 
Now, all of these are optional. As you can see, you don't really have to, but you can fill this out if you wanted to. So maybe we can add an icon, okay? So let's click on this, and then you can look through all of these and select an icon that fits your purpose, you know? So in this case, we said it is uh, designing artwork. So maybe we can look for art on me a paintbrush. Let me see a paintbrush. There you go, a small paintbrush. This is uh, creative, isn't it? So this is absolutely fine for this. Now let's go back here. And as you can see, we need to select our categories. So what does that mean exactly to have different categories here by the side? Well, basically you can create different sets of attributes and assign them to specific categories. So if you go back to the home page here in the front end, as you can see with all the categories and our different uh, attributes here displaying at the bottom. Now, if you were to open, let's say graphics and design and assign specific sets of attributes just for graphics and design, it will only show in that section. So like I said, we created this for printing industries and printing purposes. So basically this will not apply to music and audio, it will not apply to translation and so on. So this is where it comes very handy because you can assign your attributes to specific categories. So let's go ahead with this. So let's assign artwork design to let's say design and graphics. So let's click update. And now we can go back to our services page and we're going to narrow this down just for the designs and graphics. So as you can see at the moment, these are all the categories and the attributes available are delivery time and service includes. Okay. Now, if I select our new category here, design and graphics, and I filter, as you can see now by the side, we have an additional attribute, artwork design provided or not provided. And again, this is the beauty of this system. You can have specific set of attributes for every categories that you create on your website. Okay, very good. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. So now we've taken care of our categories, tags and attributes. Again, this is the main structure of our website. And now that we have those one set up, we can finally create our new listing. So let's go ahead with this. So normally this being a multi-vendor platform, you won't be the one uploading the listings, but your vendors, obviously, you know, but you might want to edit from your backend or maybe upload some of them manually yourself. So let me show you how this works. So let's open the very first one here. So let's edit this. And let me show you how this is designed basically. Okay, so first we have our title, obviously. So this is the title of the service that's being provided and a description right here. So by the side, obviously, we have to select our category and we also have our tags and all the different attributes. So do you remember we had a delivery time, service includes and license type. Again, depending on the type of attributes that you created, depending on the category that they will select here, you might see different sets of attributes. So for instance, if I was to select design and graphics and save, now, if I scroll down the page, as you can see, now we have artwork design as well, provided or not provided. So again, depending on the type of categories that you're going to select, different sets of attributes will be made available as well. And then here underneath, we have a few additional settings. So basically here, you have the name of the vendor and then you have verified and featured as well. So maybe you want to mark this listing as being verified maybe as featured and if it is featured you can also add a starting and end date as well so we have the image obviously so this is the featured image that will be displayed in the front end and obviously because this is a service that's being provided we have to charge money for it so we have to put the price as well and then your vendor can define as well how many revisions he will allow for this type of job so obviously once you're done with this don't forget to click update to save your changes. So this is how you can edit any of the listings. So let's go back here and you can also create your own by just clicking add new and start from scratch. So this is basically all about listings now. Now let's move on to our next sections, which are the vendors. So basically here, this is where you will find all the different freelancers that are working on your platform. So these are called vendors and this is basically where they all be located. 
So again, here we can create attribute as well to narrow down the searches. So let's go back to our front end. Let's click on freelancers. There you go. So as you can see, we have Thomas Hinton again. So where is he? He's right here. So this is Thomas Hinton. So let's open this and let's have a quick look. So basically here for your users, you have the name, you have a short description, you have the username. So basically once they register, they'll have to create a username and you can mark them as verified as well. And then you have the commission rate. So what is the commission rate exactly? Well, basically when someone registers on your website as a freelancer, they're going to provide a service on your website. They're going to generate sales and they're going to get jobs. And obviously each job and every sale that's generated, you are going to earn money from it. So how much money do you want to earn? Maybe you want to earn 20% commission rate from this vendor. So this is something that you can set up on a case to case basis. So maybe just for himself here, maybe he's one of your best sellers. Maybe you want to incentivize him. So maybe you're going to charge only 10% commission on all his sales instead of 20 and therefore he's going to earn more money. Okay. So this is really up to you. You can set it up here automatically yourself on a case to case basis per vendors. Or if we go here in the settings, let me show you very quickly. You can also go into the vendor section here in the settings and set up the rates as well. So if you set it here, basically, if you put 20% and you click save, it will apply 20% throughout the whole website. So anyone who will register will have to pay you a 20% commission rate. Okay. Now, if you go back here and you fill this out, this will override the settings we just set up of 20%. Now, if you scroll down the page, you can see here we have the hourly rate. So basically how much are they charging per hour? And then we have the image as well. And again, as always, once you're happy enough with the settings, don't forget to click update. So let's go back to our vendors and you can do the same with as many vendors as you have here. Now let's go back to our front end and this is the listing for Thomas Hinton. Now, if I remove this at the end, I can show all the different vendors. So here they are. So you could use this as a page as well as a landing page to show all the different vendors and all the freelancers uh, that are working on your platform. So as you can see, they're all listed here, but you may have noticed there is no way to filter this down to any specific criteria. But as you can see from the back end, we have our attributes. So let's open this. So the only attribute you have at the moment is the hourly rate, which we already have uh, in the description of our vendors. Now we can create a different attribute and use this in the front end to help us narrow down the searches and find exactly the right freelancer. OK, so let's create a set of attributes now. So let's go back here and maybe an obvious one you will have to communicate with that person so maybe you want to make sure that that person speaks the same language as you and is fluent in that language as well so maybe we can add a new uh, attribute that's called language okay and again we have three different sections editing search and display so i'm going to enable this one as a field we're going to select check boxes because that person might be speaking several languages not just the one so we're going to click publish and now we're going to add our different options. So let's go ahead with this. So let's select the first one. So we're going to put English. We're going to put French, Spanish, uh, Portuguese, maybe. And Italian. OK, let's go with those few languages. There you go. So we have four, five different languages now. So now we can go back to our attributes, select language again, and now we're going to scroll down our page and now we're going to make this one filterable, sortable, and we're going to select check boxes again. Now, because this is language, we're going to select an icon maybe of a globe. Let's find out if we can have, there you go, something like this, maybe this one here. Okay. And then we're going to click update. Very good. So let's go back to our front end and let's refresh our page. And as you can see now in our filter section, the language is available. And now if we go and edit our freelancers, 
So let's go back here. Let's edit Michelle Foster here. Let's say she speaks English and French. Now let's do the same with a few others. Very good. And now we can go back to our page here and select maybe English and then filter. And as you can see, now we have only three freelancers who speak English. Now let's select French. And now it's only Michel Foster who speaks French. Okay, so that's very, very handy, isn't it? Okay, so next, let's go back to our backend. We have the request. So what are requests? So basically, a request is the opposite of a job proposition as a freelancer. So as you can see here in services, it's our freelancers offering their services. But a request is the other way around. It's actually customers looking for something to be done, in which case our freelancers can offer their services. And here as well, just like with the listings and vendor section, you can create different categories and attributes. So we're not going to create categories. Let's create maybe just attributes. So let's go ahead with this. And let's say maybe we can create a new one that would be called budget. Because clearly, if you're asking for freelancers to quote on the job and to offer the services, they'll need to know how much uh, your budget is. So let's create this allow in front end. And then we're going to select maybe we're going to have radio button again. OK, so let's click publish. And now we can create our different options. So let's say our first option could be maybe zero to hundred dollars. The second one could be 101 to 250. The third one, 251 to 500 and then maybe 500 plus. So there you go. So if you go back in attributes now and budget, let's continue on with this. So I'm going to make this searchable, sortable. Again, let's select our radio button option. And then for the icon, maybe you can select dollars. There you go, the dollar sign. Very good. And then we can update. And that's basically it for our attribute. So we're just going to keep budget for now just to show you basically, you know. So let's go back to our home page here and let's open the request. So as you can see, now we have the filter by the side with the budget minimum, maximum, and then you can define how much you're willing to spend. So let's go ahead and post a request ourselves. So as you can see, we can upload an image. So let's select an image, I have a random image here of people kayaking. There you go. And the title could be looking for someone who can design lovely flyers for us. OK, so your budget maybe is, let's say, 250. And then you can add a description here and then we can quick submit. There you go. So as you can see, the request was submitted. So now we can go back to our WordPress dashboard and let's have a look at our request. So there it is. And as you can see, the status is pending at the moment. You can auto approve it as well, or you can do this manually. So if you want to approve this manually, we have to edit and then click publish. And that's basically it. Now it will be live. And now if we go back to our front end and look at our request page, as you can see, we have one here that says looking for someone who can design lovely flyers for us. And if you click on this, it will show you the content of that request. And as you can see, you can make an offer if you're a freelancer and you can reply to that ad and then they can decide whether or not they'll give you the job or not. OK, so let's go back here very quickly. As you can see, this job was 250 and you can use the filter as well here. So if I was to set a budget from 100 to 200 and filter, as you can see, that offer is gone because the offer here is 250. So if I was to say from 100 to 300, then this ad would be included. OK, very good. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard and now let's have a look at the payouts and then we'll take care of our general settings. So what are the payouts? Basically, payout is where you're going to have all the payment requests for all the commissions earned by freelancers up until a certain point in time. So let's say if a freelancer earned maybe $265 over the past two months, maybe he's going to request a payout and this is where it will display. Now you can set up a few different payment methods as well right here. So you could have, for instance, PayPal. You could have Stripe. And you could have direct bank transfer as well. So let me show you basically how this works all together. So if you go into payouts, as you can see, we have none at the moment. 
So let me create a new one. So there you go. This is basically what it will look like. So you could have, for instance, Andrew Wallace, who just entered a payout request for $265 and is asking you to do this via PayPal. So how do you take care of this now? Well, very simply, you can log into your PayPal account, process the payment, and then you can mark it as done. Okay, now let's take care of our settings. So for this, we have two types of settings. We have the HivePress settings right here, and we have the WooCommerce settings as well. So WooCommerce is basically the e-commerce platform that we are using to process our transactions. So let me show you very quickly if you go into services, and let's say if I wanted to buy this service here, I click on buy now, I'll be redirected to the checkout page and at the bottom of my page, I can select the payment method. As you can see, no payment methods are available at the moment is because we haven't configured that yet. So let's go ahead with this first. So for this, we're going to WooCommerce, settings, and first from here, you're going to enter your store address and details. So something like that maybe. And then you have to select your selling locations. So basically, because this is an online project, you're probably most likely selling to all countries, but maybe you want to sell to specific countries, in which case you can select this option and select the countries you want to sell to, okay? Now, if you are registered for VAT or taxes, enable this one as well. And here at the bottom, you're gonna select your currency. So you can select US dollars, maybe pounds or euros, whichever you want, and also the way you want to display. Click Save Changes. Next, if you are registered for taxes, if you tick this box here, we'll have to go into the taxes section. And basically on this page, you'll have to define whether you're showing your prices, including tax or excluding tax. And then we can set up our rates. So let's click on this one here. And from here, we can create our tax rate. So basically, this is the VAT rate or depending on how it's called in your country. So we can insert a new row. And we can select our country. So let's select the United States, for instance. Okay, US. And we're going to set a rate of, let's say, 10%. I believe it's tax 10% of VAT in the United States. And then you can put US VAT 10% as a description. And then save changes. And from now on, all the transaction online will be processed with a 10% VAT rate added to it. And now we can add our payment methods. So let's click on payments. Very good. So you can see by default, we have direct bank transfer, or check payments and cash on delivery. So clearly these are not suitable for this type of project. What you want is to get paid immediately, either by Stripe, PayPal, or any of those online methods. And if we scroll down here, as you can see, we have two of the most popular payment gateways. So we have Stripe payments and PayPal. So let's just set one up together here just to show you how it works. So let's go ahead with Stripe maybe. So let's get started. Okay, now we click create and connect an account. Enter your Stripe email account, click continue. Enter your password and then click login. Select the account that's linked to it. Click connect and there you go. In just a few clicks, we are now connected to our Stripe account. Now, all you have to do is to basically enable Stripe. You might enable the test mode as well, just in case. Scroll down the page, click save changes. And now if you go back to our main menu, as you can see, all these different payment methods have been added. Okay, now that our payment method is set up, now we can go back to our front end and refresh this page. And as you can see, now we have a credit card payment available using Stripe. So let me fill out the details here and let's process an order. So there you go. I put in my details now so you can scroll down the page. And as you can see, I enabled the test mode. So that means I can enter this card here, those numbers, and then I can enter any expiry date in the future and any CVC code, and then I can place the order. And there you go. Just like that, we receive an order confirmation. So the order is gone through for 99 US dollars. Now let's go back to our back end. So let's have a quick look then. If we hover on WooCommerce, you can see next to our orders, we have a number one here, which means we have one new order that came in. And if you click on this, you can see this one is in processing. So clearly you won't be processing the order yourself. It is your freelancer. So let me show you from the freelancer's account. So if I click on this, you can see there's a number one as well that tells me that I received an order. So if I click on this, 
there you go as you can see this one is processing order 241 and if i open this i have all the details of that order so clearly here i am logged in as the admin of the website so i'm not going to see things the exact same way but if you are a seller a freelancer a vendor you will see this in received orders if i'm the buyer i will see this in placed orders and both parties can communicate to each other they can send them messages you can mark the orders complete or open a dispute as well very good now let's take care of the layout the look and the appearance of our website so this is our home page i'm going to show you how to change your logo the menu section here also the hero section your main heading and all the different elements on this page and we're also going to take care of our contact page services page etc etc okay so let's go ahead with this so let's start with our home page and for this we go back to our wordpress dashboard and from here we're going to pages and then we're going to open our home page which is the one here so let's click on this and for this we are using the built-in page builder that comes with wordpress which is called gutenberg so as you can see it's a drag and drop feature you can add as many elements as you want so you can select any of those elements drag and drop it on your page or you can simply edit whatever is already here by clicking on the elements themselves so as you can see if you wanted to change this heading here get the job done you could change this to something else all you have to do hover on top and then we could type for instance find the perfect and here you can see where it's in orange you could change this for job okay just like this now if we update this go back to the home page refresh as you can see now we have our new heading find the perfect job and then you can do the same with your subheading here you can type something else etc etc now we have different elements here as you can see we have our search box so if you click on this as you can see by the side we have a few advanced features that come with this so there are no options related to this one this is just a search box but it will work the same way with all the different elements as we scroll down the page as you can see this one is a listing search box and some of them will have additional features that you can use to customize this element now let's go back to our home page as you can see we have a background image here so you can replace that image with your own so let's go back here where is that image now so you click back on the background generic background here and you can see we have featured image so if you click on this as you can see this is the image we have in the background so if you click on this now you can see this is the image so the size of that image is 2080 by 629 pixels okay so you'd want to replace this with an image the same size now as you can see that image is divided in half so on one half of the image we have that illustration here and the other one is just blank basically so you can see perfectly all the text and the search box and all of that so if you redesign a new uh, background image for yourself please be aware to divide this in half so one half with the image and the other half with a plain background so that your content here will stand out perfectly and basically all you have to do is to click upload file select file and add your file and i think there's another one available here so let me try very quickly yeah there is one here so we could select this one instead set featured update and let's refresh on our home page now and there you go as you can see we have a totally different feel although being very similar okay so let's have a look at the rest of our page so if you scroll down as you can see this is the main emphasis of how your website works so this is very important obviously to build trust and for your visitors to understand very quickly what you have to offer okay so let's scroll down the page now we have our top categories so if you click on this now this is a new element that's called listing categories and like mentioned earlier on this one offers you a few options that you can tweak around so as you can see at the moment we have four columns across but you can change this maybe you only want three of them maybe only two that's really up to you and then you can define how many in total you want to display so let's say if you were to select three maybe you want to display nine in total so an even number of columns and rows okay so it's evenly distributed now if you select four columns you might lower this to eight or increase that to 12 a multiple of four obviously you know assuming that you have at least 12 
uh, different categories to display. So that's basically how this works. Now next, let's scroll down the page. Now we have our featured services. And again here, if you click on this, as you can see, this is a block called listings. And again, you can define how many columns and how many in total you want to display. So this is gonna pull out information from the database and display all the latest listings based on those criteria here. So you can select specific type of listing from specific categories. So if you wanted to display only design and graphics or maybe only digital marketing, you can do so. And then you can select in which order you want them to appear. So maybe the latest added or maybe by title or just random. Okay, and then you can also specify if you want to display only featured listing or verified listings. So this is about everything for our featured services section. Okay, so let's scroll down the page now and we have our customer reviews. So if you click on this here, as you can see, you can also define how many you want to show, which how many columns and how many in total. And you can also define the order uh, you want to show them by date or by ratings as well. So where do these appear? Where are these located on your website? So let me show you in the WordPress dashboard. So basically these are reviews. So as you can see here, these are comments as well. This is the same thing, you know. As you can see, we have Central Lockout here and she left a review, um, a comment. And this is basically where this is taken from. As you can see, Sandra Lockhart and Brian Peterson here. And these are the exact same two we have here, Sandra Lockhart and Brian Peterson, okay? So next, let's scroll down the page. And now we have our top freelancers. And again, if you click on this block, on this section, it will show you a few options. So this is called vendors, freelancers, vendors is the same thing on this project. And you can define how many columns you want to display and how many in total. And again, you can sort them by a date registered, name or random. And you can also display them by verified and so on and so on. Okay, so very simple so far and very handy as well. And finally, we have the most important part is the get started one. So this one is divided in two halves. So as you can see on the left hand side, it says I need a task done. So you can view all the services or you are a freelancer looking to provide a service. Okay, so basically these are two different images here. As you can see, if you click on this, you can also edit those image. And for this, all you have to do is to click on replace. And you can either upload or open the media library and then you can select any of those images or just upload your own okay and once you do that it will show up here now you have two buttons here at the bottom as you can see this one is view service so if you click on this as you can see this is linked to the page forward slash services and this one forward slash submit hyphen listing please do not touch those two hyperlinks they're very important because when you click on them from the home page, they will link directly and go straight to those two pages, which are crucially important, obviously, for your customers and visitors to be able to register. And that's basically it for our home page. And when you're done, don't forget to click update to make sure that you save all your different changes. Now, if I keep scrolling down a little bit, as you can see, we don't have our footer section. And if I go right up on top, we don't have our menu section either whereas it is displaying on our homepage here. And obviously we also have the menu section. So let me show you now how you can change your logo, the menu section, all these icons here, and also your footer section. Okay, so let's do this together now. So for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard. And for this, we're gonna go into appearance, customize, and next to our logo, you can see we have a blue pencil. So if you click on this, we'll be able to edit this section. So you can either remove or change the logo, either way is fine. So if you click remove, you'll be able to upload a new one. And let's upload a new file. So let's select our logo, open, there you go. And let's click select. So you can skip cropping all together. And as you can see, now we have our new logo showing up right here. Now let's have a look at our menu section here. So let's click on this. And as you can see, this is the header menu that we selected. So we could select among a few different options and this is our main header section. So this is the one. Now to edit this menu section, you'll have to go back to your WordPress dashboard again. And this time you're going to appearance and then menus. Make sure that you select the header menu here. Click select. And as you can see here, we have home, services, pages and blog. And this is what we have here. Home, services, pages and blog. 
and then we have this is our main section page and then underneath with service pages freelance pages drop down menu and then the sub sub menu as you can see and this is exactly the same way here okay so now we can edit this section and we can remove and add as many pages as we want so if you wanted to bulk delete some of them click on bulk select and maybe you can remove all of these here we don't need them to be honest you know we're just going to keep freelancer page okay and then remove selected okay so now we have home services freelancer page and blog okay now you click save if you go back to our home page and refresh as you can see now we have a new menu section with those pages that we need now let me show you how you can add additional pages so you can add pages from here so you can have all your pages these are the most recent ones you can view all or you can search by name as well and then all you have to do basically is to add this to your menu so if i was to add for instance the checkout page add to menu and there you go and then you can indent this a little bit and then you can do the same with this one and you have menu sub menu sub sub menu okay now if you wanted to delete an item just click on it and remove now you can add a custom link as well so let's say if you wanted to add a request page that like we just created earlier on you could add the link directly and call this request okay let's add this and then you might want to move this maybe right here just like that and then don't forget to save now if we go back to our home page and refresh as you can see we have a request page now you click on it there you go we have all our requests right here now let me show you a very nice feature that's going to help you build the perfect menu section so if you click on this screen options on top you can add different types of items and pages that you can include into your menu section so for instance you could have listings vendors requests and even product categories product tags or tags all together okay and now if you close this as you can see now these sections have been added to our list so now we could add anything we want from our listing section from our vendors from the request page maybe categories or even tags so all these can be added to our menu sections very easily by just taking them and adding them to the menu section now let's go back to our front end and let's take care of our footer section so as you can see we have our logo a short about a section and three different menu sections as well and for this let's go back to our wordpress dashboard we're going to appearance and this time we're going to select widgets and from here if we scroll down the page you will find the site footer and we can expand this and then you're going to select the first block and click on it so as you can see this is our first section exactly the same as we have it here so we have task hive and then a short description and again you can either edit this and add a new media and you can easily change this as well by typing something else now if we click on the second section here we can see this is a navigation menu and the menu in question is services so you can select among a few different menus and this one is called services now again for this we'll have to go into the menu section here and this time on top you will select services and then click select and again you can easily add any elements by selecting them from the left hand side here so if you wanted to add this one for instance add if we save now let's go back to our home page here and let's refresh and as you can see now we have services and it's basically the same principle for blog and social I'm just going to show you social because this one is slightly different. So let's go back here and if you can select social, click select. So basically here, these are all custom links. So you're going to create a custom link from here, like this one here. And if you wanted to add, for instance, YouTube, you could put the link here to your YouTube channel and then you can add menu. And now we will have four different social media. So let's click on this. Let's go and refresh. And now if I was to click on YouTube, so if I click on this, it's going to bring us to my channel. Very good. So now let's go back. So now maybe you want this to open in a new tab. And for this, let me show you how this works. If you click on screen options here, now you're going to tick this box here, link target. You can close this. 
Now let's go back to YouTube. And as you can see here, we have the option to open the link in a new tab. So you do that, save menu. Now let's go back to our homepage. Let's refresh and let's click on YouTube. And as you can see, it's now opening my channel in a brand new tab. Okay, so very, very easy indeed.